Welcome to Bayou Time. I'm Jacob DeGate. It's my pleasure to be joined by Dean Chues, who is the director of the Bayou Country Sports Park. Dean, thank you very much for joining no, us. No, thank you all for having me. All right. Uh, coming up next week, we have 4th of July. Is here already, huh? Yes, yes. I'm uh, pretty excited. We got uh, our first annual uh, 4th of July fireworks show uh, festival going on, and it's been fun putting it together. I'm pretty pumped about seeing how the day goes that day. It's uh, when when you put something like that together and it's first time around. You're oh, yeah. Not sure about the outcome, <laughs> but I tell you, we've had a lot of positive feedback so far. So well, that, that's yeah. good. So where is it going to take place and what, what all are you going to have in store? So, yeah, it'll be at, it'll be at the sports park. And, and you know, I want to start by, you know, thanking my sponsors um, without without Louis Mohanna's without um, GIS and GIS engineering, without TETA, our local uh, Terrible and Economic Development Corporation, we wouldn't have been able to make this happen. Those three organizations really came to the table. Mr. Lewis is our fireworks sponsor. The fireworks are gonna be at nine o'clock that night, um, but we have a festival kind of leading up to it. The festival is gonna start at 12. It's at the Bayou Country Sports Park. Um, festival is gonna start at 12. We have food trucks going to be out there. We got lemonade stands. We've got uh, a snowball stand. We got an ice cream uh, machine going to be out there. Complete setup. We've got a couple of uh, nonprofits going to be out there selling hamburgers and hot dogs, trying to raise some money for one of the local schools. Um, we got five bands set up. We're going to start the day out at noon with the MJ Dardar band. Okay. Um, they're going to play for about an hour and 15 minutes. We got Leroy Thomas coming on. Um, he's out of Lafayette. He's a Zydeco band that's very popular. Mr. Lewis Mahana was someone that he's seen a few times. Brought him in from Lafayette. At 3.30, we got Voodoo Bayou, which is a couple of local guys here, but a couple of guys from out of town as well. Pretty good band to put together. We got Junior Lacrosse coming on at 5.30. And then just before uh, Rockin' Dupes, he takes the stage, we're actually going to um, have uh, some horses people riding horses with some American flags, and we're gonna do a kind of celebration to kick the night off with the national anthem and kind of get the night started. Uh, Rock and Dukes is gonna come on at 7.15 and play till about 8.45. And we hired a company out of Mandeville called J&M Displays that mm -hmm. do fireworks professionally. Um, they'll be coming in, setting up the fireworks in the park and making sure that's in a safe place for us, everybody. And uh, going to do a fireworks it's going to be about a 25 minute fireworks show we'll have a big screen on the stage that'll actually show the fireworks as well so you'll be able to watch it from the big screen you'll be able to see it through all the neighbor neighborhoods around so it's a pretty good event we're pretty excited about it yeah. well it, it certainly sounds exciting and uh as far as uh, i guess bring anything you need to bring chairs or yeah, we so we've been telling everybody it's free to the public um absolutely bring chairs bring blankets um, if you want to bring a little small tent, bring some little 10 by 10 tents. We will have five 20 by 20s set up out there to for the public mm -hmm. to be able to get under. We got some VIP tents as well, but we'll have some set up for the public to get under as well. We'll have a few chairs out there, but we won't have near enough everybody. So it's an open field. It's going to be right behind our flags as you enter the park. And it's a big open field. So plenty of room for everybody to sit down. We're hoping to have it set up where some of the vehicles will be able to pull in and just sit in the back of their tailgate and watch it from mm -hmm. their tailgates. Um, so, you know, definitely bring whatever. We ask that they not bring ice chests. We ask that you not bring a barbecue pit and come out there and cook. Um, we want to kind of keep some kind of normalcy to it so we don't have too much going on. We'll have some officers out there to kind of uh, keep everybody in check. But please come out there, bring bring all your goods. You know, if you want to you bring a, a picnic basket of food, you're more than welcome to bring your own stuff just can't come out there and cook on site you know okay uh another thing i guess question uh, how about alcohol is that uh, no so we'll actually have an alcohol okay. stand out there um and we'll have an organization coming out there selling alcohol so if you want to bring some stuff you're more than welcome but don't think that there won't be something out there for okay. you um we'll have all our bathrooms out there open we'll actually have a couple of portable bathrooms out there as well so we expect it to be a full-fledged festival um kind of a first year let it grow to be where it's going to be long term but uh i think i think we've got a pretty good platform for our first year well it certainly sounds like and it's something that that i think a good community really needs uh fourth of july celebra celebration like right that. and it, it's been a while since terrible parish has had a fourth of july celebration 
Um, we used to have an Independence Day celebration at the Civic Center mm -hmm. that most, I'm director of. Um, and it was it wasn't always on the fourth. It may have been the Saturday before the fourth, mm -hmm. you know, pretty close to the fourth, but it was never always on the fourth. And in 2019, COVID kind of shut them down and and it's been hard for them to get the wheels rolling again. So we were able to kind of take the bull by the horns with this one. I've had some amazing partners with this. Terrible Parish was fully supportive. Uh, Terrible in general is one of my big sponsors in the park. They've been full fledged on board, and these other big sponsors with Mr. Lewis and, and GIS. So it's been it's been good putting it together. Um, I got the great marketing team at the Civic Center that's helping with all our our marketing out there. It's on all the billboards in Homa. It's buy you signs, put them up as, as a, a festival. We got banners all over home that commercial signs has given us. So we've got we've got as much uh, excitement about it as we can. We hope everybody sees it. We hope nobody misses it. We want everybody to come. Um, I know there'll be some people that it doesn't touch, but it's finally going to get out there sooner or later and hit the whole community. Well, so. if, if the ones that it doesn't touch, they'll they'll sure hear about it. Uh, how good, how much of a success it was, I'm sure, and yeah. then they'll come next year. <laughs> We're making some strong efforts the last few days, and we still got about a week left. You know, it's next Tuesday, so we still got a few days left. We're pushing real hard. We we we're still trying to put it out there on every social media site as possible. Hopefully, some people see it on here and reach out to me. Any questions you might have, any interest, if you want to come out there and set up something, we're more than welcome to have you out there. We're trying, we're not, we're not trying to make money with this festival. It's bringing it back to the community. Talking uh, just a little bit about the park itself, can you tell us, you know, what's all the latest? And uh, I know it looks real good out there. Can you tell us about? It? Yeah, so uh, we're pretty excited. We have uh, a couple of projects in hand. We got one of them that's going to be finishing up the end of July, which we call the um, cons the soccer field um, expansion. It's uh, we've we've added two new soccer fields with lights. We've got three sand volleyball courts. We got a completion of a road that we're gonna that's gonna finish up in the back of the park. This is kind of a layout of the front of the park as you're coming in. This is an uh, actually back right before, right after Hurricane Ida, but you'll see as you start to go toward the back of the park the difference of what the soccer fields looked like at the time versus what they look like now. We've come a long way. We've put a lot of a lot of time and effort into fixing up the soccer fields. These are the, the girls' softball fields in the front of the park. Mm -hmm. We've had some amazing goings on in there. We've had probably a dozen tournaments just this year. In the past three years, we've probably hosted about 30 tournaments in that park. Brought a lot of people in from out of town, brought a lot of people in the hotels and motels. Um, it's a big park for the community as well because a lot of the TPR, local softball, baseball, and T-ball goes on in this park as well. So it's been a, that's been a big growth for us. And um, right here across the street that we're coming up to, that project is com half complete. The fields are done, but if you notice, there's no concession stand and no cement mm -hmm. and common area. We uh, just received bids back on that to finish that park up. We will be awarding it in the next couple of weeks and and groundbreaking on that project to finish it up. Those boys baseball fields will be a completed project. And we're starting to go to the back where these soccer fields. So that's the new soccer fields that we're on right now. July 26th, I think, is a completion date for them. This kind of this is back when we first did the groundbreaking. So there's a lot of grass in that area now. But uh, there's going to be two huge soccer fields there with lights. And you can see in the background the four fields that exist already uh, that's, that they're already playing on. So that'll give them six fields there to have huge tournaments. They've already hosted some tournaments back there. They've kind of had limited with quantity because mm -hmm. of the only four fields. But these two fields are going to be able to put them into – they can hold some some 80-team tournaments back there as well. So, And that, off to the right in that picture, I think, is going to kind of span over to it is uh, where we're going to have the three sand volleyball courts. Um, those are just about finished now. In, in this picture, you're just going to see a big pile of dirt, but those <laughs> those are just about done. We put the poles up for them last week. I think we'll be putting netting on next week, and we'll have them complete the second week of July. And off to the to just to the adjacent of that is that new road that it'll allow when we do have a huge tournament back there, it'll give everybody two ways out. So there's not a traffic jam trying to get out that sure. back section. There'll be two ways out the park, two roads out the park. So. Pretty excited about seeing this finish up. Uh, I don't know if it'll be playable uh, in the fall, but it definitely next spring. We're hoping to have uh, – we're we putting sod down, so we'll see how long it takes the tot, sod to take. It's got full irrigation. Those fields drain tremendously. We've had 
um, organizations come down and look at these fields and very impressed with the layout of them for sure. So I, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. And it uh, looks, looks nice. Everything's coming together and you, you have a comprehensive sports park, you know, multiple things. Also see you got, you got ponds out there. That people come fish in those ponds. Or? Love, love the ponds. We've got, we've got docks, four docks that uh, the parish president has been very instrumental in, in building on these ponds. Um, he's kind of been, very strong in getting them stocked up. So uh, we started out, we brought in 12,000 brim wow. and put in the ponds. Uh, we then came back about four months later and put in 8,000 bass. And wow. um, we've made a agreement with the state, a state grant money where they come in four times a year and put channel catfish. Oh, um, they put in 500 pounds of channel catfish twice in the spring and twice in the fall. And um, every January, they come in and do rainbow trout. Oh, really? So, yes, know that. people love it. People love it. So what you that's see in here, this thing. is our splash pad. That's uh, been about a year and a half done. That was one of the first pictures of it. That place right there is used daily. There's so many people out there all the time. They have birthday parties out there as well. And we have that big beach area. So I didn't even notice that last time, a couple of times I went there during the yeah. baseball season. Yes, yeah, uh, so the splash yeah, pad nice. in the beach area has been very, very popular for the public. Man, they're out there every day. They love it. A lot of the schools use that area for their uh, field trips and stuff like that. So it's been good. Uh, I, I think I, I got my next uh, outing with the kids planned already <laughs> after seeing that. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's kind of set off to the back. You don't see it as you're coming down the winding road because it's behind that area. But um, so, yeah, in fact, we're, uh, I just had a meeting today. The area that we're coming over right now is going to be a big playground area. We, uh, we sitting down tomorrow to discuss uh, what elements we're going to put into the playground. We just were awarded a grant for an outdoor fitness center oh, okay. out there as well. So we're going to be building an outdoor fitness center. We're going to be building that playground in that area right mm -hmm. there. And we're going to engineering on tennis courts. So we're going to have uh, 10 tennis courts and some pickleball courts. We're going to start engineering. And, and that area right there that's starting to come into the picture, that's where the playground is going to be. So we have that playground there. We're fencing in the soccer fields. We will be uh, turfing a couple of fields as well. So we've got some big plans, good that, big plans. That sounds like it. Yep. It really is coming together nice. Now, pickleball, that's another sport that's yes, taking off, taking man. Off, that's taking off. We, uh, we, we, we did some studies out there. When we first started talking about, you know, the because the old design in 2013 of the master plan had tennis courts mm -hmm. in it, and we started talking about putting that together, and we were like, hey, can't leave pickleball out. Exactly. And uh, man, the more we looked at it, it's like pickleball is more more exciting than than tennis to some of these <laughs> folks. So we're definitely going to implement that as well. We actually have a visit plan to a couple of facilities nearby, see how All how right. they've done it. You know. All right. Well, thank you again for coming on. Thank y'all for having me. All right. Stay tuned for more right here on HTV. Thank you, sir.